Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, high unemployment and low life expectancy. This is Teesside. Once the hub of Britain's steel industry, it's now home to record numbers of asylum seekers, filling homes abandoned by dwindling local communities. Many claimed they'd become targets for abuse thanks to their red-painted front doors. Now they've been covered over. Asad Beg has returned to Teesside to find out how long-term residents and those who've recently arrived are coping in this area of high deprivation. Once enriched by steel industry, Teesside has become impoverished by high levels of unemployment. But while jobs might be scarce, housing in towns like Middlesbrough are abundant. It's why so many asylum seekers find themselves here, and in recent months, there have been tensions. Oh, the refugees! They get everything, we don't get nothing. We, we've lived here all our lives. Asylum seekers. In this place, even the colour of front doors has become a symbol of discord, dividing communities. This area has one of the highest number of asylum seekers in the country. And when I was here last, earlier in the year, it had hit the headlines over claims that the firm housing those asylum seekers had painted all their doors red. Some of those living at the houses said it had made them targets of hate crime. The doors have since been repainted, but the issues in Teesside run much deeper than a coat of paint, where many people live in a state of limbo, in an area where there isn't much to go around. Hi, Tawfiq. Hey, how are you? You right? Yeah. This is Tawfiq Mustafa, a Syrian refugee who escaped war-torn Aleppo and risked his life crossing the Mediterranean on a boat. Okay. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. Okay. He now lives in shared accommodation provided for asylum seekers by a private company. There's five rooms, but we only got now four people living here. Yes. Asylum seekers are put here because there is an abundance of cheap housing in accommodation others don't want. If I want to go to Manchester, I can't get in a hostel. I, it's very hard for me to find a house. But here, it's like, just go tell them, I need a house or I need a home. They will give it to you in one week. He's not allowed to work, so he's given a living allowance of £36 a week. After paying for his phone bill, he's left with just over £4 a day to live on. A lot of people would rather say, I'm not going to eat, I will top up for my phone. Just to be able to contact your family? Because, I mean, like, it's very, very hard if you can't contact your family. Imagine there is war, there is all kind of problem things. So, it's number one. For, for all asylum seekers. Tofik shows me where he spends most of his time. This is where I live. <laughs> it's basic and everything he owns is in here. He tells me he still has some family and friends in Syria. His mother and sister are in Turkey, his father in Sweden. This is a family scattered across two continents and his concerns for them often keep him confined to his room. If I am angry, if one of my friends passed away, I'm not going to go out. I'm going to stay here, just, you know? You're not that close to, to anyone to tell him about your own problems. Maybe you can find two or three people, but they also have the same problem as you have, so they won't be helping that much. It's a sense of isolation felt by other members of the community. In Middlesbrough, residents have been waiting for 10 years for a regeneration that never came. It's left Catherine Toner, who lived here for 32 years, resorting to extreme measures just to protect her property from burglars and squatters. Bars at the back window and my front window, and now I've got a bar at the back of my front door. When I go out, I pour it up and put locks on. But should you have to live like I this? I shouldn't have to live like this, but nobody's helping me or nobody's doing anything for me. The council have offered Catherine money for her house, but she says it's not enough for her to resettle elsewhere. I'll eventually have to go, but... Till they sort some out for me. I'm just sitting here, bad up. 
Middlesbrough Council told Channel 4 News that there are plans to reinvest in the area. Stuction on Tees is currently combating high rates of child poverty and benefit dependency. Food banks like this one at Hebron Church have been seeing more and more people turning up for help, and it's Excuse mainly single me. men. Right, there's your food. It's expensive. Having recently moved to the area, David has to wait two weeks before his benefits transfer over. It's left him penniless. I haven't been eating when they're not being sorted or anything. When's the last time you ate? Last Wednesday. But well, it's been a week? Yeah. You haven't eaten? Mm. What have you been doing? No, I've been sleeping all day. I've been ill. What's it like not eating for a week? It's horrible. It's, it is horrible. With that, David takes his three-day lifeline of food and sets off home. It's not only people out of work that are struggling. Debt and job insecurity led Ian here. I was never out of work, but between the odd pay days being missed because there was two weeks maybe without wages, um, you'd still have the outgoings going out, so you'd be playing catch up with people. Ian says he understands why some in the community may harbour resentment towards asylum seekers, but reflects the views of many struggling on Teesside. People see that asylum seekers get benefits and don't maybe know the, the full ins and outs of what's going on behind those benefits. Obviously, asylum seekers can't work, but people don't realise that. Where I realise that and know that they should be able to get things, but also the support should be there for people who've grown up on the estates as well, because the, the estates obviously struggle. It was on these streets and the red doors here that led to much soul searching about the way the UK treats asylum seekers. This is where I meet Dolphique. Where would you like to be in five years' time? I would like to be in Syria without war, but I believe it's a little bit hard, so I will just try to study, you know, complete or try to achieve something. For now, Tofiq continues to wait. The war in Syria rages on, and his dreams of returning or studying engineering at university are on hold. Across Teesside, we didn't find signs of serious tensions on asylum, just fierce competition for precious resources. And for those that live here, it feels like a corner of the country that seems to have been forgotten.